we are given so many messages in society. We are told how we're supposed to carry ourselves and how to speak. We are told what type of clothes we are supposed to wear to be trendy and popular. We are told that the path to success is through ambition and the willingness to step on someone on the way. However, none of these are messages that we get from Scripture. The Bible offers us different messages about what it means to be successful and how we should carry ourselves in society. It offers us messages about how to be godly men and women. Perhaps you've asked yourself how you can be the woman God designed you to be. How can you move from being a woman that lives for herself and is ruled by society's messages and expectations to a woman that lives through the power of God? Here are five steps to becoming the godly woman you were meant to be. Number one, to be a godly woman, you are to love God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your soul. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, he answered in Matthew 22, verse 37. And the Bible says, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. For Jesus, this was the most important thing a person can do. I like to paraphrase it this way. Love God with everything you have. The first step to being a godly woman is to develop a love for God that is unmatched by anything else in the world. Your love for God must supersede everything. God first really means God first. Like it or not, God first means He's ahead of your love for your family, children, job, or possessions. There should be nothing more important to you. What does it look like to love God with everything we have? It all comes down to priorities. Are you prioritizing God in your life? Are you prioritizing time with God through prayer and Bible study? Are you giving yourself time in the day to slow down and dwell in God's presence? All of these things help us develop a deeper love for God. Now, the second is interesting. The second thing you need to be a godly woman can be found in Matthew 22, verse 39. The Bible says, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That means your supervisor. You know the mean one. God says, love your neighbor. The lady at the grocery store who looks you up and down and gives you a fake smile every time you go to that store, you still need to love her too. Love your neighbor means you don't pick and choose. The second step to being a godly woman, it's to love your neighbor with the same intensity with which you love yourself. Jesus said you shall love your neighbor as yourself. One of the first barriers to this, however, is that many women struggle with loving themselves. It is difficult to love one's neighbor with intensity if we don't love ourselves with any intensity. Too many of us don't place value on ourselves as sons and daughters of God. And let me tell you this, you can only love others. You can only love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, if you don't hold yourself to any value, then how, how can you love your neighbor? You see, once we've instilled a sense of worth and value of ourselves, then we can truly recognize the value in every human being. Jesus illustrates in Luke's gospel what loving one's neighbor means by sharing the parable of the Good Samaritan. A godly woman is a woman that is actively concerned for others. She is one that places the same value on others as she places on herself. Now, the third step to being a godly woman is a godly woman is full of wisdom and kindness. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. The Bible says in Proverbs 31 verse 26. A godly woman is one that embodies the wisdom of God. Wisdom is not the same as knowledge. Knowledge is the acquisition of information. Wisdom is understanding how to apply that information. It's discernment. A godly woman walks in wisdom. Now, wisdom is something that comes from experience. There are not too many wise 20-year-olds walking around. As we grow in grace, 
and grow in love for God and our neighbor, we will also grow in wisdom. The second part of this is that a godly woman does all of this with kindness. Society tells us that kindness is weakness. A woman that carries herself with a kind disposition should not be considered soft, weak, or even naive. She is displaying a godly character. Regardless of what other people may say, wisdom and kindness are necessary for a godly character. The fourth step is that godly women are merciful and forgiving. And I say this because a godly woman is one whose focus is on helping others. Jesus, through his words and life, makes it painfully clear that talking about God, knowing about God, or even loving God is not enough. That love must translate to action towards our fellow human beings. A godly woman is a woman that is concerned about the well-being of the less fortunate and who takes steps to be fair and just in all of her interactions. And part of that, the action required is that when people do you wrong, when you help people and don't get so much as a thank you, forgive them. When you help people and they turn their back on you, forgive them. And this extends beyond just other people. It's also to do with those closest to you. A godly woman loves mercy. She is merciful with her family and husband. She is merciful towards all those that she interacts with. Jesus reminds us, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Therefore, mercy must always be a part of our lives. And my final point is that godly women demonstrate humility. Micah 6 verse 8 says, And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Again, society tells women that there is virtue in being strong, ambitious, outspoken, and powerful. Now please, don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these things. Many are forced into these dispositions by life circumstances. However, God still asks us to walk with humility. Now, is humility opposed to strength, ambition, and outspokenness? I don't believe so. Rather, humility undergirds our strength. It informs our ambition and guides our speech. Jesus never hesitated to speak out against injustice or against anyone that's taught to oppress other people. Yet, he was the most humble person that ever lived. A godly woman must be who God made her to be, and she must still be humble. She must be strong and ambitious, but still humble. Outspoken, intelligent, and bold, but still humble. And so in summary as women of God, we are required to love God with everything we have, to love our neighbors, to exhibit wisdom and kindness, to do justice and love mercy, and to walk in humility. These are the traits that God asks all of us to have as godly women. A wise woman builds her house, and the foolish one tears hers down. That's not talking about physically building a house brick by brick. That verse is talking about influence. The type of influence she has can either build or destroy. Every time we pray, we engage in a war in the heavenlies. As we grow in our spirit, in our faith, we are growing in our godly influence as women. But when we neglect the Lord, when we neglect prayer, we open ourselves to still be influential women, but not of God. Hannah, like all godly women, had her own issues and challenges to deal with. And what set her apart as a woman of God is that she knew how to handle her problems. She knew where to take them. She knew how to address them. She knew how to pray. A praying woman changes things. Those who have a sincere faith pray. Prayer is not something you just do. It is something that goes hand in hand with faith. If you do not have faith, you will not be praying. If you do have faith, you will recognize your need for God more and more, and you will pray more and more. You can't separate the two. When you have faith, you pray. It's that simple. And you pray without ceasing. You pray continually when you have faith. If you want to leave a godly legacy, you need to be praying. 
You need to pray for yourself, for the wisdom and strength and guidance to live your life in a way that exhibits godliness. The Bible says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. That means pray all the time, for anything, over anything, pray. And I'd like to end with this verse. Colossians 4 verse 2 says, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. So I'm saying to you, keep praying, woman of God. To become a woman of faith, you are to devote yourself to prayer. 